Oh, hi. How are you? Welcome to Every Rock Has a Story number four. Um, I was just looking at the rock of the day. I picked it up from right here where it's been on the table, and I was just using my hand lens. This is a geologist's hand lens. I'll take it off and show it to you. Every geologist, when they go out into the mountains or into the field to collect rocks and to look at them, they bring a little magnifying hand lens just like this one. This is mine. And uh, I just have a shoelace so I can put it right around my neck and I go everywhere that I go with this. And it allows me to look right up close just like that and see all those really, really tiny details of the rock. One of the things I know is that in many rocks, some of the most important parts of the story are in those teeny tiny little details that you could only see if you look really carefully. So you always want to look very carefully when you're observing something and notice all the different shapes and colors. If you don't have one of these at home, you can use a regular magnifying glass. Yep, that works really well too. And you can see some of those details. The reason I chose this rock today is for a couple reasons, but one of them is that I realized in my earlier videos, you might have heard me talking about rocks and how every rock has a story, but I've also talked about minerals. And I want to make sure you understand what's the difference between a rock and a mineral. And our rock of the day is a perfect example to explain that. Let me just walk a little closer so you can take a look at this and maybe start to um, draw a picture for your journal if you'd like. So there's our rock. We'll talk more about it in just a bit. But you'll see that this rock, this is a rock, has a lot of colors. It's got pink. See all those pink parts? It's got some dark gray and some light gray. It's got some black, like right there. And if you look carefully, it's got some green, like those parts are green. So rocks are made of minerals. So this whole thing is a rock, but the pink and the black and the white and the gray and that green, where's the green? There's some right there. Um, are all the different minerals inside the rock. So every rock has a story, every mineral in every rock has a story. And so I'll be telling you the story of this rock today. I wonder if anybody can guess where I collected this one. Look at that shape. It's round, perfectly round, almost like an egg. How do you think it got that way? I collected this rock from a beach, from a beach in Maine, the coast of Maine, one of my favorite places to go. And there's a lot of this rock. And what's happened is in the beach with the waves that's been rolling back and forth and back and forth and back and forth for a long, long time. And all that rolling and pushing by the waves and banging into other rocks has smoothed it out into this beautiful round cobble. And it makes it really nice. I can really see those different minerals like we saw the the pink and the green and the black and the white and the gray. This rock, the story of this rock, goes back over a hundred million years, but it will not finish until today. The story of this rock starts deep, deep in the earth, in the crust of the earth, but far, far below the surface, where a hot, bubbling chamber of magma, molten rock, was collecting and starting to cool down slowly. It took a long time, a long time, for that hot, molten magma to cool down. But as it did, it solidified and turned into this rock. The reason those crystals of all the minerals pink crystal, and the black crystal, and the white and the gray crystals got as big as they are is because it had so much time to grow bigger, 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 bigger crystals. Probably thousands of years, maybe tens of thousands of years to cool and make these large crystals. We call this rock granite. This is a beautiful 
round sculpted piece of granite. And granite is one of the most important rocks in the world. In fact, when you think of granite, you want to think of the continents, the land, because most of the land, the most important thing that the continents are made of is granite, this stuff. Now, not only does the granite make the land, like in Maine and New Hampshire and California and lots of other places where you can find granite exposed at the surface, but granite also starts to break down through a process called erosion and weathering. And in the Earth's surface, this granite slowly breaks down. And one of the things that breaks down is that pink stuff. And that's one of the minerals in granite I wanted to tell you about. That pink stuff is called feldspar. Feldspar. I actually might just write that down so you can see that spelled out too. Feldspar is the most common rock, excuse me, feldspar is the most common mineral in granite, which is the most common rock in the continents. Now that pink feldspar here has a lot of potassium. And potassium is important because when those feldspars dissolve, when they weather, when they break down and crumble apart, a lot of that potassium and also some sodium, which is in feldspar, that potassium and sodium get washed away into the streams and swept away by the rivers. All that sodium and potassium from our feldspar in the granite. And it ends up being carried all the way to the ocean. Have you ever noticed, if you've gone to the ocean, that the ocean water is salty? Have you ever wondered, why is the ocean salty? The reason is feldspar from granite. All of that feldspar gets broken down. The potassium and sodium in the feldspar flows out to the ocean, and that's what makes the ocean salty. The ocean has lots of potassium and sodium dissolved in it. Potassium and sodium are also important nutrients. They're minerals that you might see on the ingredient list in cereal or cookies or anything you have at home. You can take a look at that and you can see how much potassium and sodium you might find. But there's a lot of it in the oceans. So this granite tells a story of a hundred year old magma chamber, older than a hundred million year old, hundred million years old magma chamber. It tells the story of making the ocean salty, and it shows the story of the waves. And we know it has that story of the waves from all that, that back and forth rolling that gives it that round, smooth shape. So that's the story of this rock for today. I hope you enjoyed it, and I will see you for our next story. Bye-bye.